and get into the way. How many people are sitting down and smiling? Hallelujah. It is awesome to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. God is an awesome God. Amen. He is beyond our comprehension. Hallelujah. Then you say, I was happy when they say, let us go to the house of the Lord. If you're happy, give him a clap offering. And celebrate the king. Celebrate the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're welcome to this morning glorious service. And I want to thank you for taking your time to praise the cold, the cold front and congregate some folks. I think of blanket. It looks like a day to sleep. The time to sleep, not to wake up because uh, you know, it's not a walking day, but it's a walking day when you are in the kingdom. This is the best day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the best day. Uh, this morning, I have a subject that is interesting. Uh, it's not selfishness anymore. <laughs> Because you have overcome selfishness, I mean. Amen. Yeah. You know, I know that you're not all that selfish. <laughs> In any way, you would have changed, I mean, because I preach and talk on selfishness for the last five weeks. So if you're still selfish, you need to see this specially. <laughs> Hallelujah. So thanks. thank God it's not selfishness. <laughs> Ha! I'm happy he changed the topic. <laughs> it was getting too long. Amen. But I'm excited this morning to uh, speak to you on an interesting subject. A subject that dominates the Bible. A subject that is mentioned 1,410 times in the Bible. The subject of fatherhood. Somebody say, Father. Hallelujah. Understanding fatherhood. Uh, we will be able to get into different dimensions, but this morning, for want of time, uh, I will just be introducing the subject. And we're going to be able to look at the subject in different you know, dimensions in the light of the Word of God. Amen. The subject of fatherhood and the understanding of fatherhood was so uh, is so prominent and so important that when the disciples came to Jesus to ask him to teach them how to pray, and he started uh, the prayer by saying, "Our Father." Somebody said, "Father." So the importance of fatherhood has been emphasized from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Amen. Amen. Because a father is a life giver. So it is a father. Father. He's a life giver. Now, we, we need to, let me try to clarify your mind. The subject of fatherhood is different from manhood. I said the subject of fatherhood is different from manhood. Now, fatherhood it does not of a necessity means a male female. A fatherhood is not a gender thing. Even though when it comes to certain levels, it has to involve gender. Uh, but you will understand as we go on that the subject of fatherhood is not a gender issue. The fatherhood is a subject of principle. Hallelujah. A principle of how God operates. Amen. And how He wants us to operate. So when you understand this subject fully, you will not need to pray so much for blessings. You will not waste time to pray for blessings because blessings are transferred from the Father. 
how do you know? Is that in the Bible? That is what you're asking. Yes, yes it, it is in the Bible. It is in the Bible. It is in the Bible. Uh, when you read the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, what will they Because this is an in our kind of way of foundation here to bring you to the place of understanding that will be on, but maybe not today in subsequent services. Genesis chapter number 1. The Bible says that God created man in his own image. Yeah. He created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over one the fowls of the earth and over the slowly moving of the arm. Okay, I need to go to my table. Over the and I'm over every good thing in the middle of the go on to the next verse. So God, holy day, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him what? Man and female. Created he them. In the image of God, he created them. And what is the image of God? That he created them. Man and female. Created he them in his own image. Man and female. Created he them in his own image. Did you get it now? Yes. So that is the man and female. Created he God and he created the minister of the man and female. Hallelujah. Amen. So what that is that if you're a student of the Bible, when you read a little bit further, uh, in chapter 2, in chapter 2 of that same Genesis, the Bible says, you know the service, I'm going to try to move a little bit forward for one more time. Uh, the Bible says, and God caught a deep sea. Hello. Okay, now before the deep sea, God, the Bible says, and God said, it is not good for man to be alone. But man and female created even in Genesis 1, 26, 27. And then in Genesis 2, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. And so what did he do? He, the Bible said, he caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man whom he has created. And out of the man whom he had created, he extracted the list of surgery to take out the female that was in the man. Amen. Amen. Are you reading that? Amen. Did you get it? Because in man and female created he them in one. Then in chapter two, you know, you find out that it was not good for him to be two in one, and Lord, he needs to be separated for company. Amen. So he calls a deep sleep upon man, and from the man who was sleeping, he took out the woman, the man with the woman. So God is a father, mother, God. Hallelujah. So when we talk about the issue of fatherhood, we are not primarily talking about gender here. We're talking about responsibility. Hallelujah. Amen. Responsibility. And so the Bible says wherever there is this uh, dysfunctionality in the father uh, children connection or relationship, there is a curse. So one of the trusts of the righteous ministry when it comes is to restore the relationship between the father and 
and the children and the children to the Father. Because unless that there is that functional relationship, there is no flow from the father to the children. The children cannot receive unless that relationship is functional. Praise the Lord. Amen. Therefore, the Bible says, as a part of the commandment, children honor your father and your because this is the first commandment that comes with what? A blessing. Because blessings flow through parental connection. Amen. 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 And, and if we understand this principle, uh, we as parents and we as children will need to make sure that there is no schism or breakage in this relationship. If we are to transfer blessings to the next generation. Mm. And, and if you look at our society, uh, one of the problems, see now, one of the problems of the society today is lack of fatherhood. Mm. It's a lack of fatherhood. People are not being father. Children are not being father. Uh, it does not often necessity mean so uh, that you know sometimes single parents have played the role of the father and the mother. Effectively, sometimes they are deficient. How many of you still here? Okay. Keep it quiet so much that I thought I was a lonely church. Now, this is important for us to understand. And I'm going to be able to dig into this other because you know you will begin to understand where the worst cases of in your life. And how you can also benefit and have a restored relationship even though there was no physical father you can still be blessed Amen. 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 even though there was no physical father because you see, see there is no need to cry if my father was there, my mother you know, it, it's, not, it's not me because that is not going to change you, you carry that mentality is not going to help you succeed in life because there's always a provision for what you think was missing. Amen. All what you need to do is to realize and see it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, but before I go on, uh, I'm going to start with the, the, the subject of fatherhood as an authority. As a, as, a, as a spiritual authority where we have to be able to submit to. Let me read, uh, let me read Romans chapter 1. Uh, verse 1 and before I move on from there so that you understand that this is a divine order Romans chapter 13 verses 1 Romans chapter 13 verse 1 let me read this so that you understand this and, and, and when you understand this it's going to help you also the function is going to help you to, to time your blessings hallelujah All right. Somebody say, let every soul, let every soul. I'm reading from the screen here, let every soul, let every soul. Be, subject be subject unto higher powers. Unto higher powers. For, there no power For there is no power but of God. But of God. The powers or the authorities that be are ordained by God. Be subject to authority. If you are running your life without being in authority, you are void of blessings. Because he did not. Now, now, now we don't understand this. The fatherhood as a subject and the with authority first. Because one of the end time problems 
is that we, you know we people will be disobedient to authority. They lack the mind, the capacity to submit to authority. They have problems with authority. Submission will be a sign of the end time. Submission to authority is a sign of the end time. So what we will experience in the days that we're living in is rebellion. People have rebellious spirit. Uh, somebody says passive rebellion. There is open rebellion and there is passive rebellion. Now, uh, passive rebellion is what most of us practice. Come here tomorrow. Yes, I will come to the kid. You will see me. That is passive rebellion. Never say you're not going to come. I want you to be here tomorrow. Yes, please, I will be here. Let me see if you want my bike. Now, now you may feed me. Now you may give me water to drink. Come here tomorrow as if you are God. Passive. They will not come, they know they will not come, but they will never say no. How many of you How many of you practice that sometimes? You know you're not gonna come. But for a smile, they say yes, please. You even want this. Passive. And inside you you know. You're not gonna make it. You're not coming. But you're passive, rebellious. How many of you do things like that? Just say, no, it, 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 there's no, I'm not writing your name down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that's how it is. So we, we the Bible says, let every soul be subject. So one of the train and the traits of the end time is rebellion. And, 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 and we know people, no, I won't come. That is open rebellion. I won't come. But we don't want to go that way. We just want to what time is it? What time do you want me to come? You can talk as far. You know in your heart you're not making it. Passive. Hello. The Bible says, now I'm trying to deal with the issue of fatherhood here. And I'm trying to, the Bible says, let every soul be subject to authority because there is no authority. Now, we read the last prophecy that one of the in a ministry, the call of the lifeless ministry in end time is to restore father-children uh, functionality. I'm going to use father-son's relationship, and when I use that father-son, also remember in the mind it has something to do with gender. Because the Bible says in Christ Jesus there is no one male or female. See, if you understand the Bible from Genesis, you will not have issues with female. You won't have any issues about it's a fear. You know, how can how can it be a pastor that is a woman? What's wrong with a woman? Because a woman is a man with a womb and was created in the man. They only did surgical separation to make it for room for fellowship, which is right there in the Bible. Amen. Amen. And that's why, you know, uh, uh, when you are in relationship, I know they don't want to like me too much in the church today, but keep it all open and run out to be the definition <laughs> No, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> See, so close, I did it. Keep it all open. But it was just, it was just a way of talking, taking, the, taking out the church. Now, now, see what happens here, you know, uh, you know, the issue of women. That's why when it comes to relationship, uh, if you are married, you feel your wife attached to you too much sometimes. Amen. Because, not because she is weak, but because she is from there. That's where she comes from. So a natural place of the norm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's a natural place for a woman to belong. Even a man. 
because the woman was taken from the man. And so marriage was established as a return of a woman into the man because that's how he created them, man and female. So it was only a separation for the purpose of fellowship. So that your wife is attached to you. Can you give me, give me some space, Joe? How many of you do that? Give me some space. I want you to go with you everywhere. Everywhere I go, you are following me. You are following me. <laughs> and it is a natural thing. When you understand that you don't have problem with your wife following you. You don't have problem with your wife following you. No, this, this one is for me. You can't come to the main. Which one is for me? <laughs> so your wife following you is not because she, you know she's too weak or she loves you too much. She just belongs to the natural place. Amen. That's what she belongs. Amen. Amen. That's what it is. So there is no need to uh, to everywhere I go, you want me to carry everywhere. You my hand back. Yes. She is your hand that carry. That's what it is, that's where it goes inside, that's how it is. So there's no need to complain. If you don't want to have a carry hand, don't get married. Don't get married. Because once you get married, you lose your independence. Yes, amen. That's true, sir. You become a republic. You become a sanctity. You bring more nation, you carry it. Wherever you go, you're going. So that one is a woman who is carrying his car anyway. Well, that's how it is. That's how it's supposed to carry. It's just a natural thing. There's no need to fight about that. Then that becomes a socket of quarrel in the house. You are not following me. Yeah, I'm going alone. He's going to follow you. Because that's where she belongs. Male and female created. That's why right. it was simply separated for the purpose of fellowship. And the marriage was instituted for that, to, for man to become one again. And because when man and woman become one, then the fatherhood of God is expressed in the house. Amen. If man was not separated, you know, as it was in Genesis 21, man would be able to function in that dual capacity. But because he was separated and for them to get transfer of blessings, man has to. That's why the Bible says it is he that findeth a wife, does a good thing, and do will receive blessings because there is not a restoration of fatherhood of God. Amen. 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 So I didn't think I really was going to talk about marriage, I would have come next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not a man saying that this is the issue of fatherhood. Amen. But that's the truth about it. We need to understand this. We need to understand this. We need to understand this. This is the way it is. So, man, so the woman is just being restored through the process of marriage. Back to his original state. And when the two functions together, the children receive an inheritance. We don't see that. The beginning of the rest. Let every soul be subject unto authority, for there is no authority that is set up except God. Set it up. So one of the other said that one of the end time signs that is people will be rebellious, and sometimes not openly. We cannot. Sometimes we are so good not to practice open rebellion, but we all practice passive rebellion, <laughs> keeping quiet and letting talk. When he finishes, you will keep quiet. Me, I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> and I let him preach about tight and tight and preach so they are not paying anything. I don't believe it. That's what I'm doing. I'm not going to do anything. It's, that is you, that's who you are. That's, you're rebellious, that's a simple word, but you're not 
If you want to say, do you believe in tight Believe in tight. No, you will not get my money. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's you. I'm too wise. So now, this is, this is what it is. The issue here is fatherhood. Our father, God has an authority. And God set up authority everywhere. And the functionality of authority is a transfer of blessings. Wherever there is a, a right authority, a functional authority, and you come in that there is a blessing. And when there is a discrepancy or disconnection in that father-son's you know, you know, relationship, the blessing has tripled. Blessings will not flow. And when you understand that, so the Bible says, let me, let me start from, from the, the, the second part of it. Look at uh, Genesis 9, verse 20. Genesis 9, 20. Genesis 9, 20. Dysfunctional authority. And how the curse works. Genesis 9. The Bible says that Noah began to be a husband man. And Noah planted a vine there, and he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered in his hands, and the man got drunk. And he was uncovered in his hands. All his particulars were exposed. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. Now, see, this is dysfunctional authority. Who has to expose his privacy and have one of his children, you know, solid. And this one was not also groomed to handle dysfunctional authority. So this gives me the opportunity to give you an insight how to deal with a dysfunctional authority. Because many of us you know, have been, have been sure of our lives because we have been under dysfunctional authority, never know how to deal with it. So this was, at this point in time, this authority was dysfunctional. Got drunk. Should have never been drunk. Got drunk. And like I'm making, exposed. Exposed. There should not be, at any point in time, and let me, let me talk to the home a little bit. There should not be at any point in time in a home where children are exposed to your nakedness. Now, I'm not talking about you walking naked in the bathroom. That's not what I'm, I'm talking about your stupidity and your weaknesses. Children should be covered from your nonsense. Amen. 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 Only one. Amen. Children should not be exposed. They should not be attacking you and your wife or getting your fracas in front of the children, exchanging abusive, unconducive words. Amen. Or mm. <laughs> doing my Tyson in the house. Issues. I don't 
issues in front of children. How did it happen? that one come out? So the answer he was naked. And let's see the consequences of exposing children to adult nonsense. The Bible says, and Ham, the father of Canaan, did what saw the nakedness of his father. Scroll up. Saw the nakedness of his father. And what happened? And when without and told his two brethren. So children go to school, discussing about how my mother and my father were fighting yesterday. They played the TV. We don't, I don't know what we're going to watch when I get back home. <laughs> Talking to colleagues in the school. How did it happen? He went and told the brethren would not. And thank God, the senior brothers had a little bit of knowledge of handling adult nonsense. So the Bible said they took their clothes and they went back on and they come back. They will never talk about the nakedness of their father. Neither will they see. Because seeing their nakedness can jeopardize their capacity to receive a blessing. See nakedness of your parents in folk rebellion in the home. When the father brutalized the mother and the mother, the special that we do today, you go to see me. <laughs> now when they talk to the children, come here. The children also look at them because they don't understand how. Because there's no flow of command and authority. Am I speaking to somebody here? Yeah. Because they have the lack of capacity to speak one voice. You will leave my house today. Me, I'm not leaving. I was in my father's house when you come and meet me. You will leave. <laughs>
And then I saw the lady and said, the father, go on. And, and this, is a, this is a kind of dysfunctionality that the Bible says, and Noah awoke from his wine. Now, the, the drunken state, and let me analyze this a little bit. I'm going to let you go today. The drunken state is a state of lack of ability to be saved and say the right thing. How many of you see a drunken man? Okay, I mean, you. How many of you have been drunk before and talk nonsense? And they tell me this is what you did, said God forbid. You're all dying. These people they don't like me. And yesterday when you were drunk, you were dancing coco in the back. When they said you were dancing quasi quasi, they said never dance. Or in the state of drunkenness, you begin to go. When they told you, unless they took a video of you, you would be high and drunk. Never happened. Today you are a gentleman. You are walking so nice. Yesterday it was quasi quasi. Because you were high. So in a state of drunkenness, you do things that you don't comprehend. How many of you have been drunk before? Only things that only Jesus knows. <laughs> only I know what is drunkenness. <laughs> you never get drunk and inside your pants and you thought that you really put your your trousers. You never get to that kind of drunkenness and you know what is drunk. You were trying to remove the seat, <laughs> and now you position yourself. <laughs> You are very happy, not knowing that it's inside your trousers. Only you would be talking. <laughs> then you say you know what is going on. And if you tell me that you pay yourself to stop, then you say, I've done this. You just want to abuse the living and know. I know you don't like it. They told you that if you and yourself is a fool, you don't mind it. It's not possible. I went to the toilet. Meanwhile, in the state of drunkenness, every place was a toilet. <laughs> so, I, I, you need to analyze when the Bible says he was drunk. He was drunk. And in the state of this drunkenness, this man, he says, he, 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 you, know, you, you know, I'm not all, I'm trying to make you understand physical drunkenness with what it means to be drunk. Because when drunkenness talk about character and lifestyle, Amen. that you are not in charge. There's something operating you. You say things, you act things before you think. Only in the following day, say you will be in your pants. Please don't, don't embarrass. Be, be away. If you just want to embarrass me, don't. The certain things you shouldn't talk about me, please. Don't if, if you don't want to really know me to quarrel with you. Don't even try that. I mean, be on my pants. Was I crazy? Yeah. No, you were not crazy, you were drunk. <laughs> be on the bed and then you think that these children, they pour water everywhere. And you don't even have to. <laughs> you thought that the children pour water. So why do you pour water on me when I sleep? It wasn't water, it was you that said. I know what is drunk in this, I can tell you. So, and the Bible says he was drunk, and when he awoke from his wife, this is the problem. When there is no character balance, when they, we are so not connected to Christ, and we are functional as God expects us in authority, we operate as drunkards. The Bible and you know, you know, looked at us in that way. And Noah awoke from his wife and knew what his younger son has done. I woke from his wife. He was still super. And the Bible said he blessed a curse. Not even on her, he blessed a curse on Canaan, the son of her. Why is that? Why is that? What is that rationale? That it was the father that saw your nakedness, the curse is upon the son. Because the flow of authority and blessings is like that. 
So whatever you do today affects not only you, not only your son or your daughter, to the next generation. So the curse came upon Canaan. Canaan has to suffer for his grandfather's nakedness, for his father's inability to handle the nakedness of the father. So how many children are suffering today because of the grandfather, the father could not handle their own nonsense between them, expose them to, and now this one becomes a father and is also doing the same thing to the children. How many children are suffering that? How many of us are suffering that? That we all start that day and we all mess up because of our own nonsense. You are exposed to these things and we're suffering so much in such a dimension that we can't even understand what's going on in our lives. Because I couldn't handle what you exposed me to. I was not ready for it. So you exposed me. So when you exposed me to what I was not ready, you messed me up as a child. Yeah. And you blocked my ability to receive blessings. Mm -hmm. Issue of fatherhood. It's not a gender issue. It's an issue of those in authority. And the authority, the primary authority, stands from the home. So the primary place of my life being messed up is at home. If I mess up outside of the place at home. So this was it. No, I got the generation messed up. The other two were able to escape. But the younger one was too young to be exposed to this thing that they do. Look at your neighbor and say, may you be a good parent. Oh, come on now, speak a little bit about it. May you be a good parent. You need to understand this because, you know, we, we are, I have dealt with each of yourself when you, when you overcome selfishness. You know that it's no longer about it's about the generation. Your life is, does not stop here. Your life is full of you, 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 you're full of creative. You have having children. And you got messed up by your father or your whoever was your guardian. And so you got messed up and then you mess up the race and you mess up the race and it goes on and on. But thank God for Jesus. Somebody say thank God for Jesus. Somebody say thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. So this issue of parents at home exposing their children to adult, you know, nonsense, to stop. Control yourself. Control what you say. You have what is called bedroom. Express your nonsense in your bedroom. When you come out, smile with the children. You never let them know that you guys just finished. If they ask you what is the red eye for, say, oh, it's a fly. <laughs> no, your father hit me, he wants to go to the how do you I'm just being sincere. Your father hit me. <laughs> and you think it's a testimony. <laughs> that your father. That your father. <laughs> and you think you're doing a child good? They should never be a partaker of that. Amen. But, they should never be a partaker of that at any point in time. Never shield them from that kind of situation. You gotta shield them up. You gotta cover them. You gotta protect them. They are your investment for tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this man exposed himself. And look at what happened. For only look, look at let me just read the last verse. And he said, and he calls Canaan, but he was with the army said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. And Canaan shall be what? He blessed the race who were never exposed. The race that were never exposed to the nonsense received blessings. Those who are exposed to this nonsense shall save you their blessing. 
never expose the children to your nonsense. Never. There are certain words you must not say, certain discussions never took place in front of children. Never. Excuse me, me and your father, we want to talk. You can point the finger and open the nose with them. Two people, not in front of the children. Point their nose, punch them out. If that is allowed, but that is says an abuse. How do you hit yourself? When you start hitting yourself, we call it psychotic doctor. Because you are born. When you start hitting each other, then we, we need help. We need a psychiatric doctor. It's something. Or some spiritual deliverance. Start hitting yourself. If I go down on the street, you won't allow me to preach to you. <laughs> you will call for 911 or 10 people or whatever you will call to come and take me because I am really crazy. And that's the same exactly the same thing you do. Because man and woman created he them from the beginning. It's just a return. It's just a homecoming. Marriage is a homecoming. Marriage is a homecoming. Can I go on the first? What's my time? That's a few minutes of one day. Okay, I'll close. Can you continue then? Because the way you guys are looking so quiet and so sad, I'm like a kid to be in church, but I'm not preaching you. I'm telling you the truth that you need to know and you need to be able to save yourself. If you will mess up, make a mind, make a decision, I will not mess up my generation. If my father and my mother mess me up because they expose me to drunk this kind of lifestyle, a lifestyle that is unholy, a lifestyle that does not pass to me blessings, a lifestyle of violence, a lifestyle of abuse, use you know, abusive words, physical, emotional, any kind of abuse. If they expose me to that, I'm not going to allow it to continue. Amen. I'm not going to expose my children to that. I'm going to act as a father. Even though I'm single. Even though I'm a single mother, I'm a single father. You know, I'm raising kids, I'm not going to expose. I'm not going to talk about what your mother did. See how your mother left me with you. Your mother is very, very wicked. Why are you talking about Why are you talking about it? Why do you sit your child down and talk about your relationship that has broken up? How many of you were exposed to that? Telling you that how your father was this, the father was that, and this and this and that. That's why he left you to me. And then, and then, and then. And, and you think that you really would be with No, you are just broken her. I'm broken him from having a life free from your past. She grew up, you know, because she grew up, she was a mother, he grew up, you know, and then, you know, look at every man as a father. Look at every woman as a wicked. So when he comes, he goes a wife, you know, he is a wife, he got a wife, but he treats, you know, her just like the mother told the father she did. Because you see that in in half. Now you so see. You imagine that you, 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 you know, I need to tell you what happened. I was not all alone. I did not get you alone. We only even get you alone. Nobody gets a child alone. <laughs> the last time somebody got a child alone was with Mary, and that was for the Holy Ghost. Leave that issue. Leave that issue about how you know how he walked out on me and I suffer to carry you and you know all you know from that time I never have my life. You tell me that, that that's how it is. Don't talk about it. If you have anything to say, say so who sees. Talk about who is. 
Because in all of that bad as it was, there was something good. Yeah. The Bible says, whatever things are pure, whatever things are good, if they have good report, think on those things. That's what it should be talking about. Amen. We were exposed. And then we damage the next life. So you have a man who is dysfunctional with the wife. Because that's the way, you know, the father told him his mother works. So even though he loved this woman, he still sees it from that perspective. Becomes a generational issue that they, they don't function very well. And then, you know, they break away also. Because my mother break away, my father break away. I'm better off than you. See, I'm better, like, I'm better off than me and you and your father. And so the son is going to say, I'm better off than like that. The daughter is going to say, is that the same thing? Because whatever a man sows, that he will do. never talk about your nonsense. Today is a day of healing. Today is a day of healing. I'm not, I'm just, this is just an introduction to myself. It's a day of healing. To as many of us who were disconnected from our parents physically, who were disconnected, abused, never know. Some of us never grew to know our fathers. Some of us never grew to know our mothers. Some of us grew with our grandfathers and our grandmothers and our grandees. And we never know. So we don't know what it is like. And today we have a dysfunctional lifestyle, even when we love God, and we don't know why. The Holy Spirit said, when I talk about this issue of fatherhood, there has to be healing. There has to be outpouring, releasing of pain in the heart. And forgiveness in this area, that I forgive my father that I never knew that he walked away from my mother. I forgive my mother that I never knew. Whatever happened there, I forgive and I release them from my heart and my life. That I may receive blessings from the Father, whom I am now connected to. Because I have had this issue of parents and come to church. And that's how I also relate to God. I cannot see God as my father. I cannot receive the word of God as a final authority. Because there was no authority in my life. There was no way that says, this is it, and that is it, it's ends it, it ends it. And I'm ready to accept it, I'm ready to receive authority, and so I cannot give authority. Now I come to church, and they say, this is how it's supposed to be homes. And don't come to your church, if that's the way you want to run it, run it by yourself. I get out because I never learned how to submit to an authority. Stand on your feet. There is something there. Lift up your hands. I'm sorry now to you. Everything I give to you. We all
you have emotional issues. I want to pray with you. This is the first time I've been among you in the last five years. I want to know each if you have.